Hey y'all, happy Tuesday, Jordan here. Um, I've been inspired by something recently that I wanted to share because as I've been getting into more and more uh, private coachings with folks and as I've been uh, expanding uh, getting to uh, expanding my network of getting to work with other people, um, I keep finding that there are so many times when we as artists have been programmed or given a certain structure in which we are um, asked to work. And sometimes that ends up being a, uh, a list of 10 or 15 questions that end up being something like, what is your want statement? Where did you come from? Uh, what is it that you need? Uh, who are you talking to? What is your relationship? And all of this I find ends up turning into homework that doesn't necessarily end up being reflected in the work, right? It, it ends up, it's, it's, the, it's the math teacher asking you to show your work and that's why these teachers are asking for that. They're, they're trying to provide a structure to give you these tools to be able to follow through on this uh, path on your own. However, it is also just doing the work is oftentimes not doing the work. It is blocking actors from actually digging deep and finding similar answers to similar questions, but just because we've written something down, just because we've aced the, qu the quiz, then then the mind stops working, then the body stops working, and then that work that we were asked to do does not translate into the scene. And what I've been working to bring forward over the past several months and years, uh, well, months of going through this virtual medium, but also years of working with people in person, is asking people to trust their gut, trust their instincts, and to think outside the box when it comes to all of this whole process of going through what it is that an actor does, right? Um, and so I wanted to introduce today a book that you're not going to find on any of your acting lists. No, I, I haven't met any other acting coaches that recommend this book. Um, it's, it's quite different than what you might see if you went to the acting section at Barnes & Noble or something. Um, but this book has changed, not just changed, it, it, it's something that I take with me personally, but it's also something that I have found myself utilizing more and more often as a coach when we're going through scripts with folks um, and when we are finding those spots that on paper it is tough to figure out how did I just go from this one transition where at the end of the last scene I was okay and I was having a frank conversation with someone to jump to the next scene where I have exploded on them and we are now in a full-on battle or something like that, right? Where is it? And you have to start making up these things for yourself. You have to justify it. You have to find all of those what-ifs. You have to find all of these things that make it true for you, right? Check out this book. Some of you are going to say, oh my gosh, yes, I know the five love languages from that silly uh, class that I took, or from going through marriage counseling, or from uh, listening to my friend talk about their relationship, or whatever the case may be. This book, probably written specifically for um, older couples that were starting to lose some, some love in their marriage and starting to bicker and wanting to get back to something special again, wanting to renew that love, that is what the audience is for this book. As an actor, this is gold, gold. And you could sit, <laughs> you, you could finish this book in one bathroom session. <sighs> Don't say that. Um, it's short, it's got a couple quizzes in here. You'll learn more about yourself. You'll also learn any uh, about your own spouse or partner. You'll also learn about your kids. You'll also learn about your family members and your coworkers and everybody else. Basically, in a nutshell, the five, love, the five Love Languages um, says that there are five ways in which people receive and share love, okay? And let's go through those five ways right now. Um, qual these are in no particular order. Quality time. Sitting down or spending time with someone and having a direct conversation or sharing an activity or working on a project together. It could even include like sitting next to somebody and watching TV. Um, 
as long as those two people are invested in this time together. You are sharing your time and you feel loved, okay? The other is acts of, uh, second is acts of service. Um, doing something for somebody else that helps them throughout their day, something practical. Um, I filled up your tank of gas on the way home so that you don't have to worry about it in the morning. I made sure that the kitchen was clean when you got home because I know that that stresses you out, right? Acts of service. Uh, the another one is physical touch. This isn't uh, just uh, of a sexual nature, although it can be, um, but it's it's skin to skin contact, it's touching of shoulders, it's holding hands, it's hugs, it's um, any anything that is physically connecting two people together. Another one is words of affirmation, using your verbal written or verbal or written words to affirm someone, to compliment someone, to share with them. Uh, how you're feeling about them. Um, and lastly, what did I just leave out? Oh, gift giving, uh, giving and receiving gifts. Um, and I'm not talking about going out and buying someone a Maserati. I'm talking about, again, practical things to show you that I thought about you during the day. Hey, I was at the store and I went down the aisle where I saw your favorite candy bar and I thought of you and I grabbed it. That's going to mean more to someone who is a uh, who shows love in gifts than it is to someone else, okay? Great. So first of all, with this book, you're going to start to learn what you are. Again, this book was written for people to be able to be like, you don't love me anymore. We haven't spent any time together. And this other person says, what do you, how can you possibly say I don't love you anymore? I have cooked every meal for you. I have, um, I have, uh, I, I got your clothes dry cleaned. I went out and I mowed twice during the week just to make sure that everything was really nice. And this person says, yeah, but we haven't sat down to have a dinner together in the past uh, three weeks. And I don't feel love. They're both showing each other love. They're both wanting to feel loved and to show love, but they're talking in each they're talking in their own love language rather than the other person's love language. So this person is acts of service, this person is quality time, and they are just missing each other. They are not on the same page. And so it's important to know the other person's love language. But now going back to acting going back to the acting world of all of this, the same thing is true for all of these love languages. If that is how you receive love, is if that is how you understand love, then the opposite is when someone hurts you using that love language. And you see this all the time in scenes, especially quality time and especially physical physical touch. Um, we see it all the time in scenes. So if that reference that I said before about, I, I don't know how I got from just arguing and bickering in the end of this scene to uh, to exploding on the person uh, at the at the beginning of the next scene, right? How did how did I just make that huge leap? Here's what happened. In the end of this scene, you were having this conversation, you were you were arguing, you were you were it wasn't comfortable, but you were getting through stuff. You were making it happen, right? And then the other person walked away. Okay? And in the next scene, you freaking explode on them. What just happened? This person is quality time. As long as we are arguing, as long as we are connecting and learning about each other, even if it's not comfortable, as long as we are dedicating that time to each other, this will still work out. As soon as this person leaves and takes away quality time, that is the most hurtful thing that you could do to the person, right? So you, being a quality time character, have now just been offended beyond beyond words, beyond action. You see red. We were moving forward, and this person has just stolen love from you. They have just depleted love from you by leaving, and they have said that you are not worthy of their time. And so now, the next time you go to, to meet up with them, and the next time you go to problem solve this, the next time you go to attack them, it is bloodbath time. It is they've stolen every ounce of love from you, then there's nothing else that they can give, right? And so that is where we now see that the love languages can play. And I have taken whole scripts. I have worked on scripts with people where we just sat there and said, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. I don't understand. And then we started looking at it through a love language lens and everything fell into place. So this book is a way... Sorry, can you step out right now, please? Thank you. 
there is a thunderstorm going on and my daughter walked in and she just wanted to share the thunderstorm with me. I'll be out in just a few minutes, okay? Thanks, darling. Um, but I'm, I'm like shiny object distractible. Um, it's okay, go and shut the door. <laughs> Boom, rock on. Um, by the way, my daughter's uh, quality time, is, or my daughter's love language is quality time. So now I need to go apologize to her. She was okay, but I need to let her know that I'm sorry that I couldn't meet right then. It's important. It's important for us to be able to know these things about each other and to be able to use that in a character aspect. Um, I could talk more about this. I, uh, I could provide more examples in a script. I could go through all of that. Um, but the most important thing is I think you need to read the book. Go buy it. It's probably a couple bucks on Amazon. Actually, I'll put up a link uh, when I share this. Go, go check it out and see if it doesn't give you incredible insights, not only about your personal life, but also how you start to understand that relationship and that indescribable value in a, in a scene where the character didn't even realize that they were exploding because of quality time. We don't, we don't, we don't hold a little checkboard and say, ah, I just received love. Okay. Oh, oh, I didn't receive love on that one. We don't do that. It is, it is buried deep inside us. It is behind this sternum. It is in our cells and our DNA and down to a gut level, right? And we react. That is where emotion comes from. No one can plan emotion. When I hear teachers talking about get more emotional, I want to rip my hair out because that is not something that anyone can do. That is, I get emotional thinking about that because I'm frustrated at that. But when we tap into uh, the, the love languages and how it is that you share and receive love, that goes deeper than emotions, that goes deeper than relationships, and that is how you relate to the world around you and what you want and what you need and what you crave. And it's there inherently, it's there implicitly, and you are getting down at a subterranean level in order to understand it. And then all of these choices above it are going to make that much more sense. Okay. So, um, that's it. That's it. I just wanted to share that. Um, I should also mention that we've got some classes starting up in a couple weeks. If anybody wants to jump in on some scene study classes with me or some private coaching, or we've got some marketing tool classes going on, um, that's, you know, check us out over at Book From Tape. Uh, those are starting in two weeks and everything's completely virtual. So we're working with folks all over the world right now. Um, and I will put up a link for Amazon for this book. The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. There's lots of versions of this. All you need to check out is the original, The Five Love Languages, and um, I think it'll blow your mind. All right. Keep, keep fighting the good fight, y'all. I will, I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.